Here we go. Welcome back. Today we are looking at, this is a Advance 7 panel that was sent to me from Elecro. Uh, I've had it for a few months now and this video kind of has been uh, overdue because I've had a hard time finding a project that I wanted to do with this. Uh, full disclosure there. Uh, the support for it uh, when it was released, there was not a lot there at the time. And my original goal was to do like a ESP home based automation system for a lot of the YouTube stuff here, like the light, the little nuances that it takes to get this going, right? Did find that Meshtastic is available for this panel. And that is what I'm going to be using it for, for now. Now, diving into this, it's a pretty nice little panel. It's seven inches, like I said. They had these in four, five, and seven. And there's the front there. And on the back side, you can see all of the uh, kind of add-ons. So we have two UART outs, and we have an I2C out. And then we have a speaker. It does have an SD card slot. And then we have a UART in. And then it runs off of five volts USB-C. Uh, this does have a ESP32 S3 chip inside of it, which we'll look at in a, here in a second. And then the cool thing on this one is that the modules here, right here, these kind of pop off. And that's kind of cool because you can then change out different wireless modules. So this one right here is the ESP32 module that was sent with the unit. And then I do have a few others. One here is a ESP32H2. The other one here is a wireless ESP32C6 module that was sent to uh, with this as well. A few things kind of getting into this is we're gonna hook, we're gonna open it up so you can see kind of what we're dealing with here. And then that way I can kind of explain to you a few things that I would change if uh, I were Elecro and just my thoughts on some stuff. So we had four little Phillips head screws to hold it together. Now the panel comes off and this is a very thin panel. You can see that it is clear, so that is nice. And then the second portion is the cutout area. I wanna show you a few things here, but let's dive into this. Here we have our ESP32 chip. We have reset and boot. We have here where our wireless modules get plugged into right up here. USB-C, like I said, we have a battery port here that we can put an internal battery in. And then we have a speaker that we wanted to add a speaker in there as well. There is a little volume adjustment right here on the back for that speaker. And then the two UARTs, we have a buzzer here. And then, like I said, the I2C out. And then here is your UART in. And then it has a little clock battery, which is nice. And then here's your SD card slot area as well. This panel right here, this is about a quarter inch thick. And when you put it in place where it sits in, and then this panel is about an eighth inch thick, but you're only given this kind of quarter inch gap here in the center for your battery. Now, finding a battery that skinny is kind of going to be a little difficult. You know, like I have this battery. This is an HXJNLDC. Uh, this one is a 5,000 milliamp battery that I was hoping I could put in there. This is kind of the one that you're going to use in your TDEX. Uh, same battery goes in there. That's it right there. I wanted to possibly use this battery in there, but you can see that it's a little too big and it sits on that ribbon. So that would be a no-go. I considered using an old H4M battery. Uh, this is a stock H4M battery. Uh, same thing, it, this would probably work. However, it's too thick. And this is where kind of that quarter inch gap, uh, like I said, in between this area up here, is gonna be difficult to find a battery to fit in here. And then I found this other one. This is a, a BF103454, a 2000 milliamp battery. This polarity is correct on this guy, which is nice. And he would fit great there. However, again, he's too thick. My advice to Elec Pro then would be to take this portion here, centerpiece, and make it about another eighth of an inch thicker, just enough to allow this battery or a battery to fit there, quarter of an inch higher there. And then get rid of this little center piece right here. This is where the wireless module sits in between this piece and this piece. And then that way you can then put a battery in there and still offer 
that ability to then close the back panel because right now panel because it does not fit. Now, like for when you watch this, uh, I definitely recommend just making this portion a little bit thicker, or even if you wanted to. So just make this one piece, just make this thicker, leave in the brass little thread uh, portions there because I'm going to show you how to use those here in a second. And that way we can put a battery in here. Um, or if you can also maybe just source out a battery for us that would be skinny enough to fit in there, but also for the appropriate milliamps to run this thing. And then the back cover just goes back on. It is a very nice system. Um, it, it's a good size. It would be great for, like I said, home automation, but we are going to be using it for mesh tastic for now. If you are going to use it for mesh tastic, then I would recommend having this as a home base station. Uh, you can just kind of 3D print a little stand for it, put it on your wall if you wanted to, and then you can just run your antenna uh, either off the unit or outside. Getting back into the wireless modules, uh, the mesh tastic little wireless module does not come with the uh, dongle or attachment. So luckily I had one lying around to SMA. Uh, even if you guys were to include like a ribbon antenna for mesh tastic and the 915, something like this, that'd be great. But um, no antenna there. So it is up to the end user to provide their own antenna. And then of course you have to solder on those little jumpers there to the board itself. So soldering uh, is kind of a necessary skill for the mesh tastic portion of this. This unit runs 35 bucks on our website, which is a steal in my, in my opinion for what you get. Uh, that was just the display. I don't know the exact cost for all the little add-ons and stuff because they were all sent to me as a complete package, um, but that is a great deal. Now, getting into the wireless module, back here in the back, there is some dip switches and they tell you uh, where they need to be set at in order to have a mic and speaker or a wireless module or the TF card. So be cognizant of that when you're setting up your unit for mesh testing. Getting back into the little antenna issue here is that when you have your antenna connected to the wireless module and then you have your actual antenna for mesh tastic you also run into the uh, problem now is that you have this tether and then you have nowhere to attach your antenna to um, and then i thought about drilling a hole right here to then run my sma port through like mo most of us would um, however it is too thin and then you're just going to crack it in half and then you're going to have this play this way between the two uh, between that middle support there. So you're not thick enough there to run a SMA port. Your next option is to run it on the outside. Now I just went ahead and 3D printed and I kind of created this uh, kind of my own design here, but it is a little SMA bracket that is going to screw to the back of this unit. And then you have on the top where you can run your SMA port through. On the bottom side, it is uh, hexagonal for that SMA nut to kind of fall through and then we have space for our little tiny lead to go through and then I have a hole on the back side for a screw to fit in there. If you do have one of these I will put a link in the description below where you can download this little file from and there you see that's how it's gonna go for your SMA and then that just sits in there like that and once it's in there you can then take your little lead and run it through the side hole and then kind of fish it through. So just gently just pull it through until it pops out. There we go. And then you can retwist it around. So then there we have our SMA little kind of riser support. Now this can be mounted on both sides. Uh, there is a little brass fitting there and then one down here. When I redesign this, I'll put a hole on both sides so you can run your lead to the right or the left. If I measure this right, my first one was a prototype. This one is hopefully the final uh, revision here. I should be able then to take a screw. And if you don't know what kind of screw to use, I recommend getting the Vigru kind of little screw kit here. Uh, you got 1,080 pieces of all hex socket type screws. I will put a link in the description below where I get those from Amazon. It will be an affiliate link. There we have the antenna support there. That's on the front. That is the back. Now, if you put it on, if the unit's facing you, obviously the screen, you put it on the right side, that's also going to provide from the reset and boot buttons because they are poorly placed. So another another idea I had was to 3D print another little kind of uh, little sliding kind of bracket that can screw into here and then cover 
the boot and reset. That way, when you're putting it down on a flat surface or if you accidentally grab it, you hit those and then you obviously reboot the unit. And that's kind of not fun. So uh, another little issue there, but not, not a big one. So another issue is this cord here. The, uh, the antenna cord is on the outside. I don't like that. So whenever, if you do make your own backplate or if Elecro does make a thicker one, then that should cover this module as well. And then allowing you to route this cable right here through the inside. And then you can run drill a hole or just have a hole uh, pre-made to run that cable on the outside to the antenna SMA area there. And then that way your cable won't be, get, won't be getting snagged or anything. We're going to kind of screw this guy on. That is that. Now let's just go ahead and boot the unit on. So there's no battery in here. So to boot it on, we do have to provide our own power. So here we can see the mesh tastic. When the screen goes to sleep, it has like a five second or 10 second like, like sleep mode. You just gotta tap it. And then we can go there and do our regular settings that we do. There's no GPS equipped, so there won't be anything populated from that. And then we have our settings here. And then we have uh, one thing I did notice that whenever you go to set up your your frequency, you now have the option to choose the frequency. So I had to go into this unit and then see what frequency I'm at because usually it's just like set it forget type thing or just like on one of these, you just turn it on and it just connects. This one I had to select the frequency what my local nodes were on, um, which turned out to be nano 6.875. And then it populated all the nodes in my area. Um, so something to be aware about there on this panel. Um, you hit, hit OK. The response is pretty good, which is nice. So if I go here, let's go to, uh, where's my T-deck? There's my T-deck right there. You can do a long uh, long press to get into messages. Uh, messages, you can tap there. And then we're going to go ahead and head over here and tap this keyboard down here in the bottom right-hand side. And it could also be that there's this plastic in the way there it goes so there's our keyboard and then I'm just gonna do a yo yo test and send it and then I just heard it come up on this one so if I go to my messages here that one so we got yo yo test right there uh, my time is not correct on that one so let's just go yo and then send it back and then there you go. See that we received that just fine, obviously because we're right next to each other. So, anyways, uh, you can see kind of how it kind of glitches out a little bit. That's just the firmware from Mesh-tastic. Um, that has nothing to do with the actual display itself. Um, the display, like I said, is very nice. It's pretty responsive. So yeah, I think I'm gonna just kind of set this up as a home base node. Fix my little 3D print design there. That way uh, it just hits more flush right here. Um, but yeah, that is the Ella Pro Advanced 7 panel right there running Mesh Tastic. And then the back there that we can see. Oh, and like I said, for the price of 35 bucks USD, uh, it actually is a steal um, if you're going to do like a Mesh Tastic home based system. I would like to say thank you to Ella Pro for sending this panel out to me. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry that it took so long to get this video up and going, um, but we do have. Functioning mesh tastic on it now, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna make this probably just an actual this desktop monitor right here on my workbench uh, for YouTube, because um, I can just kind of just put it like this. So there you go. Now you guys can see how that'll look right there. So that's the unit. So yeah, there's you guys, and then all the other crap on the workbench. So yeah, but. Pretty cool little panel. I am enjoying it. So thank you, Elcro. I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, reach out, uh, comment down below, or you can join my Discord. Links are in the description below as well. And then I will put a link for the Elcro panel as well. And anything else that you kind of see here, uh, I'll go ahead and throw this on uh, my Thingiverse or my Colt uh, 3D print whenever I get that up and going. Because uh, I have a few more things to throw up there as well for like the uh, H4M riser here that we discussed in previous videos. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, do the fun stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.